that can be crazy, loud, overwhelming, and often painful. Our church, this group, wants you to know that we are glad that you are here. Right here, right now. This is what we've all been waiting for. Get ready, because we start in five, four, three, two, one. Hey guys, thanks for watching tonight. I want to do this video because we're not able to have youth. Uh, we won't be able to have youth next week, so I'm going to do a video next week as well. And uh, I want you guys to watch this. Um, I'm going to do a couple of announcements, then we'll have a, a, some, a worship song, and then I'm going to give you guys just a short message that I have tonight. And I really appreciate you watching it, because that shows me that you guys are interested in what's going on, and you want to keep in touch even though we're not able to have youth. A um, couple of announcements. Next Wednesday night, obviously, we're still not having youth. We will meet back on October the 7th. Uh, I'll do the after-school pickup, so I'll pick up at Plainview and Lone Grove, and then uh, we'll come here and we'll have our after-school time, and then we'll have our, our youth service. So... Um, be sure and don't forget about that. Another announcement, the Youth Fest that I talked about last week, we're going to go to it. It's October 16th and 17th. Um, it's in Norman. We will spend the night. It'll be Friday night and Saturday night. Now, Thursday night is the Long Grove Plainview game here in Long Grove, the football game. So that'll be Friday, uh, Thursday night. And then Friday we'll leave. I'll get you times later uh, and we'll go. We're going to stay in a hotel and we'll go to the Youth Fest. The difference this year, it's normally called Convergence Youth Convention. Uh, but they're doing Youth Fest because it's going to be outdoors because of the coronavirus. So in order to have everybody that can go to be there and have that number of people, they have to do it outside. So it will be at Victory Family Church uh, in Norman in their parking lot. And it'd be really exciting. We've got some good speakers and some good uh, band that's doing worship. And so there'll be a lot of fun stuff to do there. Um, the cost of it, the registration and hotel is $75. Uh, they had to go up on registration a little bit this year, but we've tried to keep our costs as far as hotel down. So we're only charging $75 for registration, and you'll need three meals that you'll eat while you're there. So bring enough money for three meals. Here's the thing. I've got to have your registration on October 7th. That's the Wednesday that we'll come back to youth, okay? And I know it's kind of hard because we're not having youth for these two weeks, but I'm going to send out reminds and I'm going to send out notices on Instagram and, and just post the crud out of it so you guys can find it and so you can see it and remember it. But I've got to have your $75 and have you register uh, October the 7th because the, the next week after that is Youth Fest. So we can't wait any longer. I've got to have it the 7th, okay? Um, or before, if somehow you can get to me before, but definitely on the 7th, which is our first um, Wednesday night service. Now, if you come on Sunday, October 4th to service, we will be back in church then. Uh, bring it then. But if you can't uh, be here till the 7th, I've got to have the $75 uh, for registration then so I can register. Because if not, we got to pay a late fee. So bring your money with you then and we'll get you set up for that. So um, don't forget about that. If you have any questions, call me 580-504-5786. Uh, uh, text me, call me, email me. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Facebook me, I don't know, whatever you do. Uh, but if you have questions, let, uh, just get with me. So, But tonight I've got a worship song, and then I'll be right back in just a few minutes with a message, a uh, short message for you tonight that I really believe that God wants us to hear and understand as, as, as our youth today. And so uh, and, and so stay, stay with me here for just a little bit, all right?
service and, and uh, that you're still wanting to be a part of it. So uh, I really appreciate that. Tonight I want to look at uh, Luke chapter 10. There's a story that Jesus told and, uh, and it's a story that's very similar to some of the things that are going on today uh, around us and, and all the, the tension and all the, the writing and all the stuff that's going on. And I believe is as Christians, uh, Jesus gave us this story to help us in, in even a time like this. And so uh, the story is in Luke chapter 10, it starts in verse 37. Most of you probably know this story. It's called the Good Samaritan. And I want to share it with you and, and just, just to encourage you and, and just to give, shed a little light on, uh, as Christians, how we're to be, uh, even in a time like today, even in, with all the issues and stuff that's going on today. And so um, I'm just going to tell you the story. I'm not going to read it all to you. You can read it in, in uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 30 uh, through 37. But basically, Jesus told a story to his disciples. Uh, he did this a lot. He shared it with them. They're called parables, and Jesus would tell uh, parables and stories to help people understand. I like to do that, too, because sometimes you may not fully understand what, what the Bible says, but if I can bring it down to a story that you can relate to, it'll help you. And so this story I think we can relate to, but Jesus told the disciples a story about a man who was a Jewish man. Now, remember, Jesus was a Jewish man, he, and, and that was God's people. 
And this Jewish man was, was traveling along the road one day, and uh, he was, uh, there were some robbers on the road. They stopped him, they took his money, they robbed him, and then they beat him up. And the Bible says, Jesus said they beat him so badly that they left him to die. So it wasn't that they just hit him and took his money. I mean, they beat him and kicked him and, and, and just beat him severely. And so this man is laying here on the side of the road where they left him, probably off in the ditch or something, and uh, dying is what, what Jesus said. They left him to die. And, and so he's, he's laying there, and I can imagine he's sitting there praying and hoping and wishing that somebody would come along to help him and, 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 and help rescue him. And so here comes somebody down the road, and Jesus said a man walked up, and I'm sure this, this man that had been beaten was looking at him saying, please help me, please help me. And he looked up, and it was a priest, a Jewish priest from the temple. And he thought, yes, a priest, he'll help me. Surely a priest will help me. But the priest looked at him, and when he saw that the man had been beaten and robbed, he, he walked on the other side of the road, probably to avoid, because he thought he might get robbed and beaten. And so instead of helping this man, this priest, who was there to help people that God had anointed to put and put in place to help people, walked on the other side of the road and hurried along and got past him instead of helping him. And, and a little bit later, Jesus says another man walked along, and this man was a temple assistant. Again, a Jew from the Jewish temple. And this man that was injured and, and beaten badly was a Jew, and so he, he thought, well, maybe this guy helped me. He's a, he's, he works in the temple. But he did the same thing as a priest. When he saw the man had been beaten and robbed, he hurried up and went on the other side of the road so he wouldn't have to uh, be there. And, and he, sometimes... Uh, they would set a trap, they'd beat somebody up and lay them there. When somebody would come to help them, then they would rob that person as well. And so, so this, this uh, Jewish, uh, this uh, temple assistant really recognized that and heard along the road so he wouldn't get robbed himself. And so uh, two people who he thought would have helped him have just left this man laying there, beaten and unable to help himself. And then a little bit later, another man walks by. Now this guy, he, he's not Jewish. He doesn't work in the temple. He doesn't, he doesn't associate with Jews because the Bible says that this man is not only a Samaritan, but Jesus called him a despised Samaritan. Because you see, if you remember, the, the Jews and the Samaritans hated each other. I mean, they fought each other every chance they had. They, they hated each other. They didn't, they didn't associate with each other. If they walked down the street, they would cross to opposite sides of the road instead of being close to each other because they will not have anything to do with each other. So for this Jewish man who had been beaten, a Samaritan came along. And Jesus even went so far as saying a despised Samaritan. But when the Jewish priests and the Jewish temple assistant went help him, the Samaritan came along and saw this man, knowing he was a Jew, knowing he was the enemy, the hated ones. But yet he had compassion. And he went over and he knelt down and he began to, to administer uh, aid to his wounds. It says he put, used olive oil and stuff to, to take care of his wounds. And, and it says that he bandaged him up. And, and then he took him and, and on his own donkey, he put this man and let him ride the donkey into town while he walked. And it was the Samaritan's donkey. And so when they got into town, Jesus said that he took him to an inn or, or a hotel is what we would call it. And he put him in a room and he paid for the room and, and he even doctored him up or he might have even called for a doctor to come and help him. And, and he went to the hotel owner, the innkeeper, and he said, here's some extra money. Let him stay here as long as he needs to until he's well. And if it's not enough money, when I come back again, I'll give you more. And this was a Samaritan, remember? Not a Jew, not a friend, not a co-worker, didn't go to church with him, didn't even associate with him. They hated each other. Kind of like he was from Oklahoma and the other guy was from Texas or something like that. Oklahoma or Oklahoma State or even Plainview and Lone Grove. They hated each other. They didn't get along. They didn't like each other. But yet this Samaritan had compassion. And he went and he ministered aid to the Jew and he helped him. And, and in verse 36, uh, Jesus asked his disciples after telling them this story, he asked his disciples, he says, now which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by the bandits? And the man replied, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, yes, now go and do the same. Jesus told them, he said, now go and do the same as the Samaritan. Don't be like the one who, who just left him there and abandoned him. Don't be like the one who, who ignored him of fear of being hurt himself. He said, go and do the same as the Samaritan who was supposed to be his enemy, but ended up being his friend, ended up helping him. And I believe that's what Jesus wants us to do today. 
I think that today during everything that's going on and we see people and we, we see whether, whether you're, you're for this side or this side, whether you believe this person's right and this person's right, you know, we're in a, it's just a horrible time right now and, and in, our, in our government because of election, it's a horrible time because of, of, of fighting between races, it's a horrible time in everything, but yet Jesus asked us to treat everyone with compassion and respect, no matter who they are, no matter if they're our enemy. No matter if they hate us and we hate them, just like the Jews and the Samaritans. And Jesus went in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. This is what he told us. He said, do unto others whatever you would like them to do to you. And we call that the golden rule. He said, do to other people what you would want them to do to you. Treat them the way you would want them to treat you. It doesn't matter who they are. You see, you may have a bully at school that picks on you. You may have somebody at school that makes fun of you all the time. It may be somebody that's just straight up mean to you. But... Jesus says, treat them the way you want them to treat you. You know, you may be the bully. You may be the aggressor. You may know other people who are weaker than you. Jesus says, treat them the way you want them to treat you. You want other people to be mean to you? Do you want other people to make fun of you? Do you want other people to pick on you? No, of course not. So Jesus says, do to them what you want them to do to you. So here's the thing. If you want people to be nice to you, you want people to treat you good, you want people to help you out, then you need to help them out. So many times we see somebody in need and we say, eh, somebody else will help them. And then when we're in need, we're about, well, nobody's helping me. See, Jesus says, if you see somebody in need, help them out because when you're in need, you want somebody to come help you. So we should seek others. We should look to find people who we can help, that we can do good things for, because one day it's going to happen that you're going to have a need and you're going to need somebody to help you. And there's going to be nobody there because you wouldn't help anyone else. Think about it. If that priest went down the road a little bit further and was beaten up and robbed and was laying on the side of the road dying. And this man that had helped him, that, that he had not helped, this man that he had passed over was the next man to come down the road that day. Would he want to help him? Probably not because he didn't, he, knew, he would recognize it was the same priest that passed him by. But yet if that Samaritan, his enemy that he hated, was beaten and robbed on a road and that man was the next one to come along, he would probably stop and help that Samaritan because he had helped him. You see, we can't ask others to help us when we don't help them. And that's what Jesus was saying. Go and do what the Samaritan did. Go and help people. Go and find people that need help and help them so that when we need help, we can receive help in return. Because if we don't do it for others, they're not going to do it for us. And that's just a thought today that I wanted to share with you guys. It's just something that I've been thinking about and as I look around and, and, and everything that's going on today, even here in Lone Grove, even, even in Ardmore in Southern Oklahoma, I see a lot of things that are going on that I'm like, that's not right. That's not what Jesus would want. And the people to change it is you and me. It's got to start with you and me. And so, uh, again, I really appreciate you guys watching this tonight. And I want to pray with you before we close. And I want to remind you to uh, uh, keep, keep checking your remind and, and be a part of that. And I'm so excited that we'll get to see you in a couple of weeks. But until then, uh, we're going to keep doing this video. I'll do another one for next uh, Wednesday night. Check out Sunday morning uh, at Long Grove Assembly of God on their Facebook or their YouTube. And uh, uh, so watch that so you can be a part of our church services as well. And uh, so, but I want to pray with you as we close tonight. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the word and the teaching of Jesus that helps us to understand that even though we're not, we may not be friends, we may even be enemies with someone, but when they're in need, Lord, we're to help them. We're to reach out and give them what we can to help them out, Lord. We can't always do everything, but what we can, Lord, we should give to them and help them. Because God, one day we may need help. And we want to do as Jesus said, treat them the way that we want them to treat us. And God, we love you tonight. We thank you. Lord, I pray that each one that's listening to this, Lord, is being fed by your word. Lord, is that this word reaches into them by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, to encourage them to help others, to reach out to others when they're in need. We love you, Lord. We thank you for all that you're doing. In the name of Jesus. Amen.